is allowed, Honorable Singer, on the rules, but when they drown you, I will surely know. Okay. I, I had to cry to you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, the center and the cornerstone of the KZN economic growth has its own umshato between ABC and the ANC. Obugega Uzulela Amanga in Kunzi Ezimbili. <laughs> Zibugega zi, zi Zitibelene, Umbuzum Kulu, Motting Abeloku, Agugu Paza Missi in Ugleto went to Tugo with the Camus Zaseteguin. Some law, Mogumanja Gunetala, El Sengandole Pageme, Asem Kungunjo, Vu Elingu number two five six five, stroke two two P, the MEC of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, KZN versus Nongoma local municipality and, and Zululand district municipality, Ogunge Minya M. Kandli, Busong Bambisa. La la gutelo akona ingando lugube ya shule li tatu isengo gupaza gomteto nezikaba ezi tili zao. Ogu talwe uguti IFP neba mbisene nabo ipasise umteto uguetlisa isibalo sa malunga e exco. Umbuzo utiguzo trisa gudle malini lo kugulwa. Ogu talwe ngu mhopo lo wenga atanombi mbilwayo. Ogu konela amanya matembi uetlisela izwi nesibalo so gumelelega gu exco. Ngabe ganti yini imisebenzi ya belulegi bezo mteto kumaspala. Madam Speaker, the local government sphere of government remains a strategic critical mechanism of rolling out economic recovery and, transmo- and transformation or development plan. But due to political instability and power struggle as well as incompetent leadership, our infrastructure is detracting and collapsing. Service delivery is being neglected and compromised. Our poor, disadvantageous, needy communities are being denied access to basic services such as water, sanitation, electricity, and roads. These are realities. Uh, Political leaders are misusing municipal revenues or budgets to buy power or to fight to have control over municipal resources by abusing and misusing taxpayers' money. Classical example, Inko sum tuba tuba and um shabuya lingana court petals. Som lomo, lesi sham teto si nao a man lok pegele look sevenza wemi nyango ga hulumeni no maspala, no wenza isi pagamiso zesi tribielo zezum teto. Nga ko jenge nfp city agwenzi we ukwa ningo nom teto zo vimbo so politigi ne intlanga no zabu wuting ngati belwa impi ya manda no kpate inga ndolo magunga seche nziswa imali ya mkandu aba mangalelene aba seben zise izi mali zabo bazi kokele bo na izi ndlego za makala no guti izi menenja zo maspala zizi pelela nise nezi impi zo so politigi nguguti njalo zifage notice to abide by the court uh, decision loko Kogwenza o maspala babe iza kiwe zizmele. Setembu guba lendizo ngomu gubu ngongo shoga kokta nozo agabo. Bage benze ize tulo zezo mteto. Ezizo vige lukse chenziswa budlapa. Be mali yo maspala egulweni amandla okpata. Um, sinetemba uguti lendu. Oh, somlo mwemlandu nasempilwe na makanzela na mutla. Ngafunda toshe likulu kumava. Go is fazane uzanelega makwaza msibi egu patwe ni go maspala. Ye abantu base zululenda bagaze baswela manzi no ma bepega ne ne inkinge inkul zogunga letwa manzi ingate se imeya yes fazana. Gaze gube konu kwa ningo, lok twa ninga ma pugu olu no topo, futa gaza lande lu ipunga ne kaka lenko shagalu no kwabanisa. Oga njinji wafundi saba ningu kutu hulme nukusebe nsana nukubambisana kwa maka imbu patu waga njani ngu 2011 ngingati INFP ngu mukusebe nsana ne ANC kwa maspala ba un-19 kwa Zulu Natal. Sawa zi ukusebe nsana nukubambisana na nge nku ulinto nipo nubu holibo mtabu ogu waba nukumela ogu letwa wendu tugo ezi ndaweni za makosi. Sinetemba uguti lendu ngukubambisana no Salka, IEC and other government department and institutions of higher learning izo gutata loku igwenze guba isi gongangu kufundisa no kututugi suluazi la makanzela na segwa kiwe ni gombimbi olu no zinzo. Loku guzo siza ugu kwe mama tala nezimbi ezi ngena stingo ezi talawo kumbela kwe sabo ngena yoguntula 
ulwazi si nfp sizimisela ukwenza izethulo ngalo mbono ngeke salokho sakhala ngamakhansela angaqeqeshiwe sibe singenzi lutho ukuwalekelela ngolwazi nokho kuseza ezinye izinguquko komasipala ngenxa yezimo ezobambiswana thank you speaker and honorable members <coughs> Honorable, the next member to start off the debate on behalf of the ANC for eight minutes is Honorable Z.L. Aitela, the chairperson of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Portfolio Committee. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, Honorable Members of this August House, distinguished guests, I greet you all. Let me take this opportunity to thank my party, the African National Congress, for affording me this opportunity to be part of this debate. Honorable Speaker, President is Reginald Oliver Tambo, while he was in Angola in 1977, once said, I quote, Comrades, you might think it is difficult to wage a liberation struggle. Wait until you are in power. I might be dead by then. At that stage, you will realize that it is actually more difficult to keep the power than to wage a liberation war. People will, will, ex, will be expecting a lot of services from you. You will have to satisfy various demands of the masses of our people. In the process, be prepared to learn from other revolutions, um, for other people's revo revolution. Learn from the enemy. Also, the enemy is not necessarily doing everything wrong. You might take his right tactics and use them to your advantage. At the same time, avoid his mistakes. I close quotes. Interestingly enough, when you Google this quotation by President or 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 Artambo, one of the other places you find it, strangely, will be under the DA's Helen Zill's tweets that she tweeted in 2019 while she was purporting to be pro-black. We have come to learn how much of a racist she is, even in her own party. The enemy, might, uh, the enemy never stopped stealing from us. It continues to steal from us to this very day. It is now even stealing the lessons directed to us by our forefathers of this revolution. Only that they apply the very lessons racially. Today's debate is very crucial for the future of this country in that we cannot, we cannot formalize collusion, but parties are allowed to make political arrangements. As the ANC, we totally disagree with this motion because as a country, we have not reached the intended destination of total freedom, especially while, while which includes the economic freedom, let alone the national democratic revolution, which is the future for this country envisaged by the ANC, that will be delivered by the ANC and its alliance partners. We have now come to realize that we have been derailed by the enemy, hence as a responsible party, we must take stock to identify our own contribution in this derailment. Honorable Speaker, let's take a look at the summary of history of the coalitions in Africa. Ethiopia being the only country in Africa never to have been colonized. The rest of Africa has been subjected um, to a variety of revolutions and changes in governments over the decades to bring about democratic dispensations. The, the liberation movements across the continent have also struggled to govern beyond 20 years. Post-colonialization as they grappled to navigate a new and unfamiliar terrain of policymaking, economic migration from colonial to a, liber to a liberal economy, balancing politics, uh, regional and global integration with the agenda of liberation. These conditions have proven difficult and even uh, disastrous in many African states, leading up to a dictatorship, never-ending military coups, and general civil disorder, notwithstanding the opportunists foreign, the opportunistic foreign and imperialistic hand in all these. But that's a debate for another day. Honorable Speaker, all coalitions and all uh, coalitions in South Africa uh, which are not led by the ANC have, have failed due to the very reasons that united the oppositions. The hatred against the ANC that has proven a strong glue as parties assume control of municipalities, as these parties are unable 
um, to set their agenda apart and focus on the needs of the people on the ground. We've seen parties with contradicting, uh, contradicting election manifestos forming coalition government, which have always become a legendary political fiasco. How can a party which claims uh, that one of its uh, cardinal pillar, pillars is national, nationalization of mines, banks and other strategic centers of the economy form a coalition with a party which stands in direct contrast, contrast with nationalization of anything, let alone the expropriation of land without compensation. Clearly, such coalitions are not formed to advance the democracy, but to perpetuate narrow political agendas. These coalition governments are, de uh, are definitely not working in this country. Pierre de Force on his journal, the constitutional legal uh, dimension um, of coalition politics and governments in South Africa said, I quote, the, persist the pessimist conclu uh, conclusion is that the problem with coalition government in South Africa has thus far been political, not legal or constitutional, where parties that work together have large um, policy differences or where those parties are not animated primarily by their state, uh, uh, stated ideological commitments, but rather by the urge to acquire government, government power and access to resources, patronage that this presents. The, norm, the normal ideological glue that may hold coalitions together is absent. Mshoni shwasom lom. Lapo kwa zulu nadali awa sebenza ama koalition. Ika kulukwa zgo maspala aba petwe yi kumbule nkata. Ekuluin. Buga nje ingutu. Buga nje ingutu. Ungongo she waga kokta kanye no mnyango. Waza wange nelela befuna ukasha izi menenja ezi ngafundile. Lolu tabula abo la hamba la zola fia wi constitutional court. La po inka ndole ea nguma uguti. La ba sebenzi abafunu kashwa ilo mkandru vele abafane lo kashwa. So mlomo, umkandru waga nongomo kanyo no wasa zulu lendi. Opetwe ilo belu ilo mlengata. Na, na lelu ki koilijin. Na obelu unongoshe no mnyangu waga koktwa. Wa uise inka ndolo kubangwa. Amanda Executive Committee, Lapo Inca, Taifun Uchela Amatembu, Uta Aklan is the Ganjan Executive Committee. Yaw. Capet and Jisom Lomu Labo Maspa Laba Petri Lili Kimb. Sikulumanje Labo Maspa La Msonisha Som Lomu, Balengezisu, Pansi, Gonke Hambigas. Kuningi Jesom Lomus Nagusho, Engalo, Nalemikan, Buganje, Umzinyat. Une irregular expenditure of 1.6 billion. What we saw here in the home country, some lomo lapo ngatoli kona ukusebenza wabanda banda banda manzi agu kogni ingi kota home country une malenga 1.6 billion abanga guazwi accountel. CM country una sendu meni some lomo lapo ukutola gale kona ukutum sebenzo home country utata imali enga 150,000 ebe ngayone ya kebe kufaneli kokelu service provider waifara gwe account yake ukutola gale leo some lomo ukushukuti si shogo na ukuti asifu melani nale 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 nkulu mesi kulu manamshanje some lomo si akitali utama kwa ili jinzi anga formalize wa kubilizu si abonga The next speaker for five minutes on behalf of the Inkata Freedom Party is the Honorable O.B. Kunene. The Honorable Speaker, the Honorable V.F. Chavis, the leader of the official opposition, Honorable MECs, Honorable members of this house. One of the greatest challenges South Africa is currently pleased tasked with is effective and reliable basic service delivery to all citizens, irrespective of geographic location within our borders. In part, this is largely due to the fact that many municipalities across the country struggle to generate income as they often service poorer communities out of their main economic zone. This lack of sufficient resources greatly impacts upon the ability of municipalities to meet or maintain service delivery tactics and objectives. 
with these challenges in mind, our municipalities nonetheless have a very important mandate as set out in Chapter 7, Section 153 of our Constitution. The IFP has never wavered from its core principle and belief that service delivery and responsiveness to the needs of local communities remain the undisputed business of government and that the leadership at provincial and local government is best placed to identify and respond to the needs and challenges of the communities it serves. The political world wins circulating the socio-economic and political spheres of our country clearly indicate that the days of a single party securing an out outright majority are over. This is a fact which is being proven time and time and again as the ruling party strongholds are being overturned. The citizens are tired of hollow, hollow talk. They want change and change will come in 2024. The era of co coalition politics, honorable members, is upon us. But such era will bring its own challenges in respect of how quickly we can all adapt to this new age of South African politics, whilst ensuring not only the continuation, but moreover the improvement of service delivery and the quality of lives of the citizens of our country, who should be the ultimate goal that all parties, political parties pursue. The 2021 local government elections resulted in 66 hung councils. However, the dilemma that we face is that political party coalition partners try to strike a balance of attending to all service delivery, delivery demands without a clear and succinct strategy in place. This is where public participation and an increased role for traditional leaders in local governments would be of utmost importance in order to adequately respond to the needs of the electorate. There's also a misplaced perception among parties that the creation of local government coalition is an indication of political weakness. This has resulted in political parties and coalition parties fighting each other through costly court challenges for increased power. This only negatively impacts the people dependent upon those municipal councils. Since with having to defend legal proceedings, leave limited funds and intellectual resources that should be deployed for service delivery to the people are instead focused on political and legal battles. As a party that prioritizes the will of the people and aims to ensure that they receive the basic services they are, they are constitutionally entitled to, the IFP urges the National Minister of Cocta and Honorable Cocta MEC of our province to place greater emphasis on consequence management. We recommend the amendment of, of enactment, enactment of laws to prevent council funds from being misappropriated. Council funds should not be utilized to address any issues that do not directly relate to the needs of the people, such as court cases between parties. Political parties which wish to challenge their counterparts who serve with them in coalition municipalities should find their own disputes and ambitions, as municipality services should not be collateral damage on the battleground for increased political power, as it is the case now. Whilst we have the utmost respect for the rule of law and every person or entity's right to defend themselves in court, it is our plea and suggestion that courts scrutinize the material and financial position in cases related to municipalities. We are concerned about the focus being on political parties gaining stronger foothold in their respective municipalities, instead of how their search for power is affecting the very people that voted them for them in those positions. Political instability caused by the quest for power does not just happen in court battles. As we have been witnessing the, an, an upset of political intimidation and killings this past year. I'll come back on our speaker. The next member for eight minutes on behalf of the DA is the Honorable L.M. Mayor. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I have my time still zero. I'm not complaining, but. <laughs> I have a lot of sympathy for this motion, as it is clearly born from a deep concern for please the... Please hold, please hold, please hold. Table stuff. <laughs> what is happening with the time? <laughs> I, I expropriated the time, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. 
I have, a lot, I have a lot of sympathy for this motion, as it is clearly born from a deep concern for the residents of our municipalities and for the struggling municipalities of KZN and other provinces that are suffering under unstable governments and where different aggrieved parties are forever turning to the courts to get to what they perceive as justice. And it gets worse when a court case is between Cocteau and the municipality, because, you know, Speaker, when they report on a civil matter, they say it is X versus Y, and in a case like this, it is the taxpayer versus the ratepayer, because it is indeed public money, and it's the long-suffering citizens that lose. So I feel the pain my honourable colleague is expressing in this motion, but whilst I think the honourable members are identifying the correct problem or the correct symptom of the problem, I cannot fully support the solution. Madam Speaker, the smart and dedicated people who sat and negotiated our interim constitution and our current constitution from all parties tried to put in place a system that would prevent the kind of power overreach of the executive and parliament that we saw those nasty gnats make themselves guilty of before 1994. So following best practice from across the world, it was settled on a judicial democracy, an extra free and independent check and balance through a free judiciary where the people of this country can turn to the courts when their rights are being trampled on by the other two branches of government. And it's in the same in the local government. The often less than capable municipal governments we see all over our country are often so inept that the residents and sometimes political parties have no option but to turn to the courts so that the Municipal Structures Act and the MFMA and other relevant laws will be followed, enforced and respected. So whilst it can be, like anything in life, life, misused, this check and balance is vital for the protection of our people, our rights, and for the functioning of our municipalities. And this House, with all members having sworn to uphold our Constitution, even our Honourable MEC who said he thinks we need to rewrite the Constitution, I'm not sure he meant it because it was while he was campaigning to keep the top job in the ANC, this House cannot seriously consider taking any decision that would hamper the courts in this vital constitutional mandate. I would, however, agree that we need to work with the judicial branch of government to have the correct penalties for frivolous cases. So if a political party takes a municipality to court and loses, the party should carry the legal cost of both parties. Or if a mayor uses public funds to defend him or herself and loses due to the dereliction of duty, or if the mayor is deciding to take a political party to court for whatever reason and loses, the court should carefully look on who should be carrying the cost of those cases. But ultimately, the Honourable Member of the NFP, who I respect dearly, identifies the real cause of the problem. For Madam Speaker, we are in the age of coalitions. Even in the metro in this province, it is governed by a coalition after the ANC, they who say they will govern until certain celestial returns, lost their outright majority in a metro, a losing feeling they will have to get used to very quickly. I must also add, it is difficult to tell who the majority party is in the coalition at Tequeni, as I see more of the deputy mayor than the mayor. It is like he is teaching Mayor Kahunda the ABCs of government. But in seriousness, honorable speaker, coalitions are here to stay. And we know, oh, the DA knows, coalitions are hard. And I am a firm believer in coalition governments. In most of the world's most successful democracies, coalitions is the rule, not the exception. And they can and do work, but in case it end, they do not seem to work. The problem is not the courts. The problem is political parties. Honorable Speaker, we will struggle with coalitions, unstable municipal and potentially provincial and national governments, as long as we have unscrupulous and unprincipled political parties who are here only for positions and for money and not to serve. If a party is built around a person and a personality, not values and principles, then these party seats and votes will always be up for sale to the highest bidder. As long as we have parties with no internal democracy, where you can walk off the street and be appointed a provincial leader by your CEO, where the leaders are not held to account, we will see these unstable coalitions continue. When looking at the political violence, the Murano Commission talks about the internal culture in some political parties, um, where fighting for positions of power are the norm, and positions that come with bigger salaries are often the causes of violence. And herein lies the root of the instability in many of our municipalities in KZN.
And I do agree with the Honorable Friend from the NFP that we need to look at this problem as the elected leaders of our province to then engage through the NCOP with our esteemed colleagues in Parliament. For if we cannot sort out our instability in coalition government municipalities, we will face a much bigger problem in 2024. No one in this House that seriously follows events in this country can think that this province and this country will not be governed by a coalition government after the next national and provincial elections. In my culture, if someone can see the future, it is said that you are born with the helm. Well, I do not need to be born with the helm or look into a crystal ball or throw the bones to know that coalitions will govern South Africa and coalitions will govern KZN. But will they be stable? The DA, oh, I know, no wishes needed. I don't need to blow out the candles. The DA believes that we need to make changes to our electoral laws to ensure the stability of, of coalition governments. Just recently, on the 13th of October, the DA's federal leader, John Steenhuisen, he also tweets, Madam Chair, announced that the DA will submit a private member's bill to do exactly that. It is a five-point plan designed, again following international best practice, to ensure more stable coalitions. One part of that plan is electoral threshold, and my colleague from the NFP is not going to like this. This will mean that if a party must get a minimum of one or two percent of the vote before they can take up a seat in municipalities or provincial governments. I mean, look at Itikweni. This metro council has 24 political parties in council. 24. Of these, 15 only has one seat, and four have two seats. The smallest of these parties got a mere 1,300 votes out of a voters' roll of millions. These parties with a few thousand votes become the kingmakers, having power far beyond what the voters have given them, and this is destabilizing our municipalities. The rest of the plan focuses on limiting the number of motions of no confidences that can be put, setting up an independent register of political parties, and other necessary measures that will bring stability to coalition governments. Madam Speaker, we need to limit the cost of unnecessary court cases and municipalities, but it cannot be done by limiting the power of the courts. It must be done by necessary electoral reforms to ensure the stability of coalition governments. And I just want to reply to the Honourable Chairperson of the Cocteau Commission. I can see she follows Helen Ziller because her hairstyle looks faintly familiar to Helen Ziller. So thank you so much. The next, the next member is going to be EFF member for six minutes. They are not in the house. Now we'll have the Honourable M. Gavenda for eight minutes on behalf of the ANC, the Chairperson of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Honourable, uh, Honourable Speaker, let me commence by reminding this House that on October 19, 1977, the apartheid government banned various media and publications, including the World and Weekend World. The editor of the World, Persik Koboza, was detained along with many activists and 19 organizations were declared illegal. The day became known as Black Wednesday and is also observed as National Press Freedom Day. Let us all remember that the media plays a valuable role in our democracy and let us be thankful that we have attained this democracy and media freedom. Honorable Speaker, let me state that as the ANC, we agree with the NFP that most municipalities that are governed through coalitions are dysfunctional and that consequently, the lack of cooperation between political parties and the failure of co cooperative governance has impacted negatively on service delivery and development. As we are aware, coalition politics became a reality when no becomes a reality when no party attains an outright majority in an election and then has to enter into an agreement with other parties in order to govern a municipality, parliament or legislature. This is not a new phenomenon in South Africa. Following the first democratic elections in 1994, the National Party and the Inkata Freedom Party formed a coalition cabinet with the ANC under the constitutional agreement arrived at during CODESA in order to enable wider political participation in the country's transformation and reconciliation process. In KwaZulu-Natal, the ANC and the IFP formed a coalition cabinet while the ANC and the NNP did likewise in the Western Cape. 
However, tension and infighting between parties often results in short-lived coalitions. For example, the NNP, the Democratic Party, and the, Freed the, uh, the FA constituted a DA coalition government in the Western Cape province, which was directed at excluding the ANC, which had previously been in coalition with the NNP. The South African constitution prescribes a system of cooperative government and ring fences powers and resources for cities, no matter who runs them. Generally, national and provincial governments have left opposition cities to govern without interference. However, internal coalition politics it what is, is what has proved to be extremely damaging for good governance, as evidenced in Johannesburg, Chwani, and Nelson Mandela Bay. The political coalition partners in all three cities had very little in common other than a desire to sideline or exclude the African National Congress. And this resulted in instability and tension, threatening to compromise good governance. All three coalition cities have executive mayor systems where decision-making power vests mostly in the mayor and the mayoral committee. Municipal councils are relegated to more of an oversight role and have been conveniently sidelined by mayors, coalition mayors, keen to centralize power. The 2002 Constitutional Court ruling that mayoral committees did not require proportional representation meant that these coalition mayors could freely choose councillors to appoint to committees, making it very easy to sideline political opposition and generally the African National Congress. In Johannesburg, the African National Congress was excluded from the mayoral committee despite occupying the most seats in the council. Talk about subverting democracy, Honorable Speaker. The overconcentration of power in the mayor's office, when combined with a lack of a clear line between cities' political leadership and their administration, becomes even more damaging. After the 2016 elections, all three coalition cities either purged senior, senior administrators appointed by the African National Congress or made their work difficult enough to persuade them to leave. And thus, they lost skilled personnel, which adversely affected service delivery. While all of this occurs, people suffer. Whilst political parties hammer out their deals and arrangements to occupy influential positions, service delivery does not seem to figure on anyone's agenda. The NFP motion also alludes to public funds being used to pay for leadership challenges that are taken to court, not to the ballot box. And this is ironical because the leadership is supposed to be voted by voters, not voted through the courts. Indeed, the will of the voters who, for example, in Johannesburg, Chwani, and Nelson Mandela Bay voted in the main for the ANC has actually been ignored. Whilst coalitions can have advantages, such as the public benefiting from diversified interests and wider representation due to different parties with the different ideologies working together, as well as stability arising from compromise and consensus-based politics, the lived experience is quite different. As has already been mentioned, municipalities have been plagued by instability due to contestations for control of councils. Smaller parties, due to the reliance on their support, often demand key positions, thus punching above their weight. There's a lack of accountability when anything goes wrong with parties playing the blame game. Parties are also likely to differ in policy positions because policymaking becomes a challenge and a potential threat to coalition governments. The thing about coalitions is that they do not necessarily express the will of the voters, the will of the people. They express the will of political parties. A party that has won a significant, albeit not majority of the vote, may end up being excluded from the governance of a municipality or structure due to parties that have insig received insignificant support banding against it. This is fundamentally undemocratic and it violates the will of the people. We have numerous examples of this. So voters end up being sold a mess of pottage by opportunistic coalitions cobbled together for expedience rather than out of a need to serve the interests of the people. For example, in Johannesburg, where the ANC won the majority of the municipal vote, it was shoved out. To date, there is jostling and jockeying for control of the municipality, and it's the community that suffers. People voted in numbers for one or the other party and its manifesto, but coalitions deny them the opportunity to have their wishes and choices seeing the light of day 
due to exclusion rather than inclusion. Horse trading, bargaining for positions, getting plum positions appears to be the order of the day. Coalitions can be messy. And as the saying goes, Honorable Speaker, when two elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. Successful coalition governance ultimately depends on political maturity and the ability and will to govern across divisions. It's not about legislation. It's not about running to court and other such things. It is about respecting the will of the people and serving them. It's about delivering to them what they voted for and who they voted for. As Amilka Cabral, Cabral said, and I quote, always bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas, for the things in anyone's head. They are fighting to win material benefits, to live better and in peace, to see their lives go forward, to guarantee the future of their children, unquote. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The next speaker for two minutes, on behalf of all the members of the NFP in the House, is the Honorable C.M. Shinga. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, this debate is going to look and focus on the human resources uh, within the municipalities governed uh, through e Look at the, looking at the issue of the uh, human resources within local municipalities, those in coalition come together and discuss and share or allocate position, positions. Where they do not agree, the service delivery is affected. The, the example that we have is of a Tequini municipality. Look at the amount of time it took for them to appoint the MM. And the, the, the municipality had to function without the accounting uh, officer. Officials who do not qualify are moved within municipalities. They do not see a problem when an official did not qualify on municipality X and then Ahambe Ayovelagu municipality Y. That's the, the, the coalition. And then lower level posts that are supposed to benefit community members and assist us in fighting uh, poverty in some municipalities. For instance, your EPWP. Kwabelwanangao, Kuse Egseni Abantu Sebe Koge, Imifani Swan. So we continue to highlight the, the challenges in the coalition uh, governed municipalities. Honorable Speaker Ngabong. The next member for two minutes on behalf of the NF is Honorable Esther Kur Rajbansi, Mrs. Rajbansi. Honorable Rajpanzi, and this is because they are tete Honorable Rajpanzi, the I will request Honorable Pagati to check Honorable Rajpanzi e connectivity as the whip of the minorities. Was at that. While said that, I will call the next speaker, which the Honorable Rajpansi will follow. The next speaker will be on behalf of the ATM Honorable M. Pagati for two minutes. I, I, I know that you are all saying Nagoge speaker just for the record. I understand that the legislature of KwaZulu Natal gives offices allocation of party coca staff, you will be doing yes. that to your coca staff so that Honorable Rajpanzik's connection is confirmed. Yes. After you finish, he will, she will be debating. It's about our call. So, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm Watu Jesu one son, onge na son ogni na gatache iche, 
amhlahle ngalo lo esifazane kuyiqiniso ospika ukuthi alikhi iqembu elingenazi inkinga zalo kodwa ngoba isimo esibhekene naso njengamanje sithi asihlanganeni ukuze sikwazi ukuphatha uma singase sifunde nje ukuxolelana sikwazi ukuthi siphathe izwe lakithi sibeke impilo zabantu bakithi phambili ngaphezu kwezinto zethu esi ngayizwani ngazo kodwa likhona akiqembu speaker osuzwe nga umsindo kuyona yonke indawo yonke indawo la lona eliphatha khona nabanye bayalwa yonke indawo nasegoli baluyile nje kungekudalanga sebeluyila akusekho ukuzwana okwenza ke lapho impilo zabantu bakithi zibuyele muva kodwa ngiyakholelwa sipi ukuthi singabantu abamnyama namaqembu abantu abamnyama uma singenza ngeqiniso sixolelana ngokweqiniso singakwazi ukuliphatha lelizwe libuyele kubantu balo ngiyabonga Honorable Esther Kurraj Banzi for two minutes. Honorable Esther Kurraj Banzi for two minutes. Honorable Esther Kurraj has been called for three times. Seemingly, she's not in the house. Therefore, she falls off from the debate. We will now, yeah, the minority whip can read it if, if they had made that arrangement. There is none. I don't know. You are the party leader of the DA. You're not the presiding officer. You're not, you're not the minority leader, Honorable Rogers. Now, the next speaker for two minutes is ACDP. ACDP has tenured an apology. They are not in the house. We will move to the Inca Tafridom party for five minutes. Honorable OB Kunene, demand. Honorable Speaker, it is unfortunate that Honorable Shing and Honorable Kwele use this debate to launch an attack against the IFP. It follows, therefore, that I'll be failing in my duty not to respond to these unfortunate utterances. For the record, the IFP abhors corruption and maladministration. The mention of Zuland and Amajuba districts, municipalities, if there's anything wrong that happens there, we as the IFP will support law enforcement agencies taking action against any wrongdoing found in those municipalities. I wish also to correct Honorable Tele when she said that coalitions that are are formed by the NCI success. What about Nelson Mandela Bay municipality that has been taken away from the INC back to the DA? She also referred to an official that transferred money from Endumeni, who works at Endumeni, and transferred money into a personal, his or her personal account. She did not mention that that happens while the ANC was in control of that municipality. <laughs> the Honorable MEC will come after, after me. He will confirm that this was, was a founding of the Auditor General in the previous audit. All I could say is that it is political jealousy that we see at play because the IFP benefited the most from the 21, 2021 local government elections through coalitions. The IFP has conducted various research trips to countries that have been able to successfully implement the coalition politics model, such as Germany. Coalition governments at the local level should be regarded as an opportunity to do, to do collectively more for communities. As seen in other examples, coalitions need to be able to transfer different interests such as needs and desires over and above material needs and wants into one strategical, strategic political plan. The effectiveness and success of any coalition is based on their ability to group, prioritize and compromise on interests in order to collectively decide on the main issues they'll focus on 
and the approach they will take. Intra-party compromise is something South African politics has not yet mastered. However, one cannot insist on a singular position alone. There needs to be the maturity of negotiation and compromise. Given the levels of distrust experienced by the governing party at national level, the electorate is spreading out their trust to different political parties in order to enforce transparency and accountability, which has been a lingering desire. In the interest of the electorate, it is evident that people want to see greater accountability and oversight in local government, which perfectly fits the coalition government's models. Political intimidation and killings, as well as internal political court cases have led to, to the destabilization of various municipalities. Against the coalition, again, the coalition governance model could aid in securing stability. In a country where corruption runs rampant, consequent management is neglected, and taxpayers foot the bill for wasteful expenditure, political parties need to start acting as watchdogs and hold each other accountable. It is the only way that South Africa will have their basic needs met. South Africans will have their basic needs met. Coalition governance ensures stability, accountability, and transparency, which in turn leads to growth. And growth, especially economic growth, is something our country is in dire need of. It is important to be cognizant of the fact that the possibility of coalition governance is no longer hypothetical, as we are part of a transitional political climate in our country. While being mindful of the spheres of governance and express the need for greater political Governance autonomy would be in favor of the Minister of Coca working together with the provincial MEC to create a standardized model that for governance best practice. It would be beneficial to all municipalities if this plan covers dispute resolution mechanisms, training work programs, and others, and this, as this will ultimately contribute to the strengthening of our democracy from the grassroots with the people of South Africa being the only winners, which is what it should be. I thank you. The next speaker for 12 minutes on behalf of the ANC is the MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, the Honorable S. Zigalala. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of this House, the struggle for human liberation and development remains a constant struggle against all deprivation and endeavors that denies equality. The system of democracy guarantees, that, guarantees the right of all citizens to elect and be elected to govern. Consequently, independent and political party alike contest elections to be elected to govern. Prevalence of coalitions is therefore not a voluntary will of any party or individual contesting elections, but rather imposed by the outcome. But in South Africa and in this house today, we have heard that, no, the solution is coalition. How do you contest elections to get into coalition? You should contest to win on your own. The coalition government have resulted in the entrenchment of the liberalism that sought to diffuse classical ideological struggle under the covert disguise of a neutral state, but in essence, enhancing capitalistic prospect. The formation of coalition ideally is expected from parties that share common ideas and vision. However, in the current political landscape, domestically and globally, coalitions are formed irrespective of ideological dispositioning. In nowadays, coalitions are not based on ideology, but rather on what is or how to access political power to influence governance and embedded state resources. In Guazulu Natal, the 2006 local government elections resulted in the formation of a coalition in some municipalities, especially under 
utungulu na ukinke chwayo amachuba utukela district. In all of those municipalities, the balance of power was between the ANC, IFP, and DA. Expectedly, what was to be happen was that the ANC and the IFP were to co-govern because they were the majority. However, the DA, the IFP chose the DA. Throughout that term, the ANC was at the receiving end of all harshness and impositions. The worst of it all was when the IFP and DA wanted to decide on who should be in the executive committees representing the ANC. In some of these municipalities, the ANC had to remain without executive committee members for the entire term while deserving to be represented. Whilst one is not raising this to undo healed wounds, but it is the fact that this ravaged the already compounded relations between the ANC and the IFP. The 2011 local government elections produced another set of coalition government composed of the ANC and NFP. In all honesty, the ANC and NFP coalition function with great respect, whilst there were challenges internally, but we were able to manage that internally and didn't affect governance. It is also worth noting that whilst the ANC was in power with the NFP, we as the ANC were acutely aware of the fact that that on its own inflicted pain on the IFP on the very understanding that the NFP was born out of the womb of the IFP. The 2021 local government elections equally produced a set of coalition government as there were no outright winner in number of municipalities, resulting in the DA, IFP, EFF dominated coalition. This was in disrespect of the fact that the ANC had received majority vote in some of those municipalities. I present this fact objectively so to reflect the reality about the evolution of coalition and the balance of power. But importantly to ask the question whether we as political blocks constituting this legislature have ever considered whether we are utilizing political power bestowed on us in earnest to advance social economic development. The obtaining reality is an antithesis of the prospect envisaged by Pilsika Isaka Seme, who in 1911 prophetized that, I quote, the African people, although not a strict homogeneous race, possesses a common fundamental sentiment which is everywhere manifest, crystallizing itself into one controlling idea. Conflict and strides are rapidly disappearing before the fusing force of enlightened perception of true intertribal relations, which relations should submit among a people with a common destiny, close quote. Where is that common destiny for us, the people of African society? The status quo as obtaining today call on all of us to be awakened and to, critical, and to critically avoid the void and pitfalls that have been defined by stereotypes we have adopted. And when I say we have adopted, I mean all political parties alike, in particular those political parties dominated by Africans and Blacks in general. From across the political spectrum, we agree on the creation of a non-racial, non-sexist, equal, democratic and prosperous society. Only those who benefited from apartheid colonialism want to preserve the status quo. This therefore compels us to explore areas of convergence and practical standard of cooperation. Thus, what should be the critical pillars for a healthy coalition? One is respect for each other's independence. Two, is to set clear communication and cooperation channels. Three, 
is to agree on a clear set agenda with programmatic uh, time frames. And lastly, is to ensure that all partners are shelving away subjective interest in pursuit of development and fight corruption and nepotism. It's a common fact that the 2021 local government elections formed coalitions. And these coalitions were formed with no aim of serving people, but solely to punish the ANC. They were formed with the sole agenda of using local government state resources to dislodge the ANC from power in 2024. Most of them lack capacity, and individuals who are occupying positions of power are preoccupied by looting government resources. As such, maladministration has become the order of a day. Individuals with no proper qualifications are assigned to senior positions in administration with impunity, as it is alleged to be happening in some municipalities, including Abakulus. Just yesterday, the DA called on the MEC for Cogta to investigate the alleged corrupt practices by the mayor of Echozin. This on its own, the call is correct, and we will investigate this allegation. But that tells you that the IFP and the DA are co-governing in some municipalities, but they've got no shared standards and principle on what standards of governance it needs to be adhered to. Honorable <clears throat> Speaker, the DA has spoken here telling us that no, Corruption is for other parties and not the DA. They have told us, uh, the IFP says they've gone to Germany. We don't need to go far. In a book published by Mapungubwe, the marriage of inconveniency, the impact of coalition in South Africa, Susan Boysen says, as I quote, as Fotswane city manager commented, the DA and EFF politicians were all trying to eat because the center did not hold conditions for corruption mushrooms. Close quote. This book, this book is available and it is authored by Professor Susan Poison. Having said all of this, the government by the virtue of being in office, exists to serve the people. We must therefore grapple not only with challenges presented by coalition government, but also with the massive opportunities that they bring in strengthening governance and improving the quality of services. In all that we do, let us be united by a by a consensus that we are the servant of the people and we must do everything to unite our people behind a sustainable developmental agenda. We have to work together as patriots inspired by the wish and aspirations of all South Africans, in particular the poor and the marginalized. Good governance, efficient service delivery, and community participation should be the hallmark in all spheres of government and organs of state. Once again, I wish to take this opportunity to thank Honorable Shinga for provoking this legislature to debate such a strategic and relevant matter that affect most of our municipalities. I thank you. Honorable members, we will now call upon the mover of the motion on behalf of all NFP members in the House today until 2024 for five minutes, Honorable C.M. Shinga, to respond to the debate. <laughs> At some point, Honorable members, Honorable Speaker, proclaimed in this house that uh, the chief whip belongs to all of us. So I would have expected protection from this all. 
but it is not coming. <laughs> honorable Speaker, honorable members, um, let me take this opportunity to thank all of you for the participation and the justice done on the debate. Um, the inputs are really, um, the engagement was good. Thank you so much. Um, it is important to note that we have this debate because there is no legislation uh, such. This municipality could have been running much more effective than they are now, if there was. The, uh, the Coalition Best Practices presentation by Avon Doherty uh, says that uh, coalition must be beneficial to all its constituency parts and it must, there must be something in it for everyone. There must be a, a willingness to compromise. So we must take that uh, honorable members to our constituents because if we do not compromise, then our community members will suffer. Honorable Tele, thank you very much for your engagement. I appreciate that you took us through the history of coalition and brought to our know-how uh, to our know how other countries manage or control a uh, coalition. You continue to raise challenges faced by some of the, of the local municipalities within KwaZulu Natal. Honorable Gunene, thank you very much. You came out clearly in saying, uh, we, and we are all in agreement that municipalities must not bear the cost uh, or pay for the uh, court battles. You, you promised, uh, you indicated that this happens because we lack stability and you promised that stability is coming in 2024. Uh, I, I, I gather that. Honorable Mayor, thank you very much for your informed and constructive debate. Indeed, pointing out the challenges that community members are subjected to, to through coalition-led municipalities. You referred to smaller parties being king makers. Uh, interestingly, honorable, honorable Mayor, you will notice that they are given positions like deputy ma uh, mayors with no resources attached to it. It is for this house uh, to, to note. Um, honorable Speaker, uh, Coalition needs to be informed with values and principles of service delivery as opposed to power, abuse, and corruption. We cannot defend incompetence and maladministration. So in, in those words, I, I want to thank all the honorable members for the time you took to do the, the research and participate in the, in the debate and remind you that we did all this in the interest of our constituencies, which are the people who vote for us. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Shinga. Honorable members, we've now come to the end of the debate. I want to recognize the fact that Honorable Shinga brought Public, no, she doesn't like us to say all. She's representing herself on behalf of herself. Honorable Shinga has uh, requested and uh, been granted to bring some members or community members from her constituency to be part of the debate. We recognize them at 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 the gallery. Earlier on, we are informed that there were students from Umfolo Zitivet. We also recognize them. We just appeal so that Ndinga Kabani no chief we Pundinga ba recognize Anga Ama guests. When people have to bring guests, they follow the procedure and ensure that uh, we are aware through the office of the chief whip, because constituency outreach is in that particular office. So that we, we acknowledge your guests. It's, it's important that we acknowledge all of your guests. 
thank you. Honorable members, we now have come to the end of the order paper. I want to thank all of you and remind you of the announcements we made earlier on. The first one, that the issuing of the certificate to His Majesty King, Mrs. Zuluga Zultid, will take place on the 29th. Honorable members were required to confirm and give their ID details. I am also informed by the protocol staff that honorable members are inquiring about uh, their better halves. Uh, honorable members, the invitation is as you received it. Those in the category of the better halves received that invitation. They will not be able to register your spouses across the road. Secondly, honorable members, following the resignation of Mr. Nwango from the Democratic Alliance, who was their chief whip, honorable Rogers, has informed us that Mr. Mwango has been replaced in the position of the chief whip of the Democratic Alliance by the appointment of Honorable Dr. Aikika, who is the chief whip of the Democratic Alliance. NJ, you are going to have that time to properly welcome the doctor in the WIPS forum, uh, where he will be staying with all of you. We recognize his responsibilities. We recognize his responsibilities in the house in ensuring discipline and adherence and comprehension of the rules. It starts with you, Honorable Kika, comprehending the rules. Uh, Whilst we're at that, Honorable Members, the House, we have come to the end of the House today, and it remains adjourned sine day. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Oh, poor, oh, poor. Oh, poor.